Okay, in this short video, we're going to show you how to drop the drip pan from the bottom of your burner drawer. So first, get a nice piece of foam or a blanket or something to lay on. It's a lot easier this way. I'll go ahead and open your drawer all the way. The screws we're going to be removing to remove the drip pan are up underneath here, and we'll show you that shot in just a second. Okay, now that we're underneath the drawer, you're going to want to take out, we'll start over here, this screw, this screw, Sometimes there's a screw here, sometimes not. If there's a screw there, go ahead and take it out. There's a screw here that holds the bottom of the handle pull panel on. Take this one out. Sometimes there's a screw, usually not. Take this screw out, this screw out. Sometimes there's a screw, sometimes they're not. This is pretty standard of what the bottom is going to look like on a 30 inch and a 40 inch. Typically the screws that are there that you'll find will be these two the one in the middle and these two. So one, two, three, four, five. Once you do that, the drip pan will drop towards you this way and we're gonna go top side after we've removed these screws and show you what that looks like. Okay, as you can see, we've removed the screws and our drip pan has dropped down. This would be a good time to come up here and we'll talk a little bit about the burner drawer. Okay, these burners rotate up for cleaning. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate all these burners up like this taking the burner supports out you'll notice on your heat minder you'll have this empty hole in the middle that's the burner support that allows the heat minder uh, to stick through and this one with the silver is what it looks like where it says speed heat that would be for your speed heat support burner here the two normal Frigidaire supports would go for your back ones so we're going to take these and set these aside we'll also remove our drip pans these two drip pans have already been removed okay all our drip pans burner supports have been taken out it's a good time to show you here's where your model number is right here so we'll zoom in on that if we can there's your model number at the back left of your drawer. Okay, now we'll remove the drip pan. Just grab it on both sides and it just pulls out just like this. And you can clean this, paint this, do whatever you need. Okay, now we're underneath the burner drawer and you can see we can get to all the components here. So we can get to all the burners and the heat minder. These are the two plugs for your heat minder. So you can just simply unplug these if your heat minder went bad. These are the two screws here that will drop your burner if you're replacing a burner. So you would simply unplug your burner plug here. Some have plugs, some have simple fast-ons that push onto the two spades in the burner. Either is fine and you can replace a burner with a without a plug, with a plug, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The spades in here are all the same and the fast-ons that are captured in here are all the same. So if we were going to remove this burner to replace it, you would take out this Phillips head screw and this Phillips head screw, and the burner will simply come out. That's the same over here. This screw and this screw, and the whole burner assembly will come out. This screw, this screw for this burner, and then on this one it's going to be very hard to see, but it's the same two screws. There's one of them there. This also will allow you to get to your burner wiring, which is captured right here in the side of the burner drawer. And then on the other side, you also have your burner wires, which are captured right here by this little wire holding them up and out of the way. Okay, one more thing on the burner drawer. If you can see, there's a fuse back there. That's a screw-in, screw-out fuse. That is a fuse for your automatic outlet that's um, just below the oven, the one that you would plug your power cord in for a mixer or percolator something like that so if your automatic power plug below the oven doesn't work check that fuse it just simply unscrews now we're going to look at the rail system which is the locking bar perfect the locking bar of the drawer and i'm going to push the drawer release button and you'll kind of see what happens right in the middle there see that moving this is your locking bar. So it pulls the pin and allows you, you can see the pin drop right there. So when you push the button down, the drawer will move. When you release it, the pin locks the drawer in place. 
If you're having trouble with your drawer locking or not unlocking, then you can see that arm moving. That's probably your problem. Either the spring is fatigued or something is misaligned. Okay, we're going to reinstall the drip tray. It just slides back in. One thing to note, if you look in here, you'll see this drawer lip right here. Make sure when you're installing the drip tray that this goes over the lip. Some people push this and it won't install correctly. You want to make sure it comes up and over the lip, slides to the back of the drawer. It's the same on this side. If you look in here, you want to make sure you're over the top of that lip. There we go, right there. The drip tray should sit flush against the back of the burner drawer. Okay, and the final step is, once you've got your drip tray up and over the lip, is to simply push it back up and go ahead and reinstall your screws.